Hey, what's guys? I'm back to the channel. On this episode, we're going to be talking about portable hacksaws. Just kidding, because a hacksaw is a very uh, useful tool. You can use it in a variety of situations. It's almost like a savior in case you kind of need uh, to, you know, hack something up real quick, right? But sometimes it would be useful if that hacksaw was in a power tool situation, right? And we're going to call that a bandsaw, right? So of course, bandsaws, there's large applications for bandsaws. We're just not going to cover all of them. But this bandsaw is a saw you can use with one hand, okay? One hand, lightweight, easy to use. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. This right here is the DeWalt Atomic Compact Series 20 volt max. A single handed bandsaw. It has variable speed dial and it is lightweight enough to use with one hand overhead and it's small enough to fit in all type, kinds of tight spaces if you need that kind of saw action. So we're going to go over this tool top to bottom. So if you want to know how this tool works out or if it's good if you want to buy it, stick with us. This right here is a compact, lightweight bandsaw weighing at a whopping 6.6 .6 pounds. It comes with an integrated guard, making it ideal for overhead and one-handed cutting applications. It has a cut capacity of up to one and three quarters of an inch, which allows for cutting a large and small size metal diameters found on the job site. It has an easily adjustable required speed for cutting stainless steel, strut, all thread, and all kinds of other material on the job site using the variable speed trigger and dial. Hang on to this bandsaw between cuts by using the hang hook. And this tool is equipped with an LED. It is a lanyard ready and tool connect ready. This tool is backed by DeWalt's standard warranty, which is a three year limited warranty, 90 day money back guarantee, and one year of free service. All right, so this obviously is the front part of the tool and you know, all the stuff is gonna be pretty straightforward and obvious. This is your release lever to release the tension on the wheels, right? There's a blade uh, tracking nut you can use here and there is a jam nut. You kind of have to loosen up if you wanna, uh, you know, lock it into place. But out of the box and factory, it's been pretty good. Um, I've been using this a lot recently and we've had this for maybe little over a year, I wanna say. Uh, but we've been using it a lot more recently and haven't had any issues with the tracking, all right? Uh, the Allen key uh, lever, uh, tool is actually right here on this lever right and there is a, a integrated belt hook right here in case you were using a lot overhead and you just needed to you know hang it on something it is right there and it will also put on here you know don't use this for uh, lanyard type systems where you want to hook it on something right here it says look at the manual right so you know they really want you to look at the manual because this is a pretty dangerous tool and you don't want it to fall all kinds of stuff right so uh, otherwise on here you'll see right here it says De dewalt atomic compact series so if you didn't know the atomic is the compact line of the to of, of dewalt right so they make it you know as compact as possible and one of the major reasons why i have this tool is mainly because it looks like the size of about a 12 volt tool right but uses the 20 volt batteries right so dewalt at this current time of recording this video makes 12 volt batteries so they have a 12 volt system a 20 volt system and a and a flex volt system which is 54 volts you know uh in other places in the us they kind of call it 60 volt max but they have three platforms and i currently right now at this time i don't think we own any 12 volt tools and i did not want to buy uh, or get into the 12 volt lineup you know just to get this tool so it's great that they make this atomic compact series all right so that's good uh, the integrated blade guard is right here it is removable in case you wanted to do that i would highly recommend not doing that uh, on here is a little place where you can kind of hook um, an attachment type system so if you want to lose some type of lanyard or fall rest type system that's where this would go and if you look at the battery compartment here it has the the uh, copper and metal bars right here and also these bars to connect with the battery uh, if you're going to use this tool i would highly recommend using a compact size battery like this four amp hour battery or even the 1.7 amp hour uh power stack 1.7 amp hour power stack i think is better than this battery mainly because it's a lot less weight, right? So if you're using this overhead, that's the one I would use. And don't get me wrong, you'll get a lot more runtime with this one, but the power stack battery is super compact and lightweight. There's no reason why you shouldn't use the power stack battery, right, on this tool, right? So if you put the power stack battery on this tool, 
just look at it, it is almost, uh, adds almost no additional weight, whereas this battery adds just a little bit of weight, right? So, you know, that's just my preference. Uh, I did buy this uh, tool as a kit and it came with this battery and the charger, so, you know, that's why we have this battery. Other than that, uh, the handle here is a pretty standard DeWalt handle. If you're used to using DeWalt tools, it's going to feel pretty right at home. This right here is the trigger, and this right here is a trigger safety, right? So you have to press this in from either this direction or this other direction in order to activate the tool. And this right here is the variable speed dial. So as you can hear, it indexes at every spot and it goes from one to three and it can be adjusted while the tool is in operation. We'll show you that in a second, all right? And this right here is the trigger, as we didn't mention it already. It's a standard DeWalt setup. You know, if you're used to using DeWalt tools, you're gonna feel right at home. Uh, before we get around to the inside of it, let's go ahead and check out the variable speed here. So like I said, we'll take this power stack battery, put it in right there. It's on mode one, check this out. As you saw there, the variable speed didn't do too much. Let's take it up to three, which is almost the middle ground. Right? So you can see the variable speed trigger does work pretty well. If you take it up to five, right, that works really well. So let's just assume that you started something really slow, just, just you know, to get a good uh, precise cut, let's just say, right? So you take it here, you can adjust the speed. Right, so it's not one and done, but you know, it is nice to have it. I usually like to keep it around three or four, and then if we need to, we can cut it faster. You know, just there's something to say about the faster you cut it, the faster the blade heats up, all kinds of accuracy and lifetime issues. Anyways, we're not gonna get into that, but we will cover this part right here. If you are using Tool Connect and you wanted to add that in here, that's where the Tool Connect thing would go. All right, let's go around, flip it around to the back side. Before we do that, let's go ahead and lift the levers. So if you want to lift the levers, you lift this and this, all right? And that opens up the inside cartridge in here, which you can see, let's open it this way, it'll make more sense. Uh, so this right now comes with, I think it's a 27 inch blade, and even if you buy it as a tool only, it does come with the blade. There are aftermarket blades available for this saw. You can either buy the DeWalt blades or aftermarket blades. Um, I don't, I don't want to say we've had the best luck with some of the, I, I think the ones found on Amazon, like Fox BC, Fox Bros, or whatever you call it. Uh, that one's been pretty good. Like I said, um, usually we've been using Bosch, Lennox, or even Milwaukee Blades. Not on this tool, but the other band so tool we've had. And we've had really no issues, right? So if you, were, if you unlock the lever on this side, right, the lever, this... Uh, wheel will become a drum it will come a little bit loose and you can remove the blade i'm not going to go ahead and do that mainly because putting the blade on is pretty standard you unlock it it releases the tension you pull it off right same thing putting it on you put the blade on this got the rollers right here on both sides of each side of this right of the blade and then also on this side because the blade turns or pulls in this way so when you are inserting the blades there's really only one way to insert them where the teeth stick out right so if the <laughs> You obviously don't want the teeth to stick in because that's not how the tool works. Uh, but you know, it's pretty standard there. It's got this little brush here to brush off any of the metal shavings that may get caught. You can kind of see on here with a lot of usage, it doesn't always work perfectly, right? Uh, but it does work good enough to not have any issues. We haven't had any slippage issues or any of that. And like I said, we've been using this a lot recently to as some of the metal parts that we've been fabricating, especially with battery racks and stuff like that. It works really well. So that's what you really get with this saw. The saw model number is DCS377. And uh, right now you can buy it as a tool only, I think somewhere around like 199 or something like that. Or you can buy it as a kit for a little bit more. The point of putting the prices out mainly because you can find them in all kinds of sales or whatnot. There was a time where we did buy this saw with this battery as a kit. I think it was like 150 or 160 or something like that. And that was just a great deal. And we do have the larger Milwaukee Deep Cut one and also the Dewalt one. But those are, you know, two-handed operation. You you, you, you can't really use that tool or those bigger ones with one hand and try using that overhead with two hands it becomes even more challenging which is the reason why we have this saw one-handed ease of use operation if you can two-handed you'll probably see in some of the videos it's much easier to use with two hands you know because you get more stability you can guide it more but this tool has been i don't want to say a lifesaver but has been uh you know almost uh 
irreplaceable, right, in some of the things that we've been doing. Just cutting small nibs and nubs off of some of the racks or even some of the uh, bolts that run long, you don't wanna be using the big one all the time. Don't get me wrong, there's a place for that, but there's also a place for this. So would we go out and buy this tool again? Most definitely, if we need this tool, we'd go out and buy it again. But I will say, if you're gonna buy this tool, make sure you buy extra blades because you do not want to have to need to change the blade and not have a blade when you're on something or working something. That's probably one of the most annoying things that, that's out there, right? So make sure you get some extra blades. I think you can maybe get like a two or three pack for like 20 bucks so if they're not uh, super expensive and they do come in a little bit variety of teeth, uh, teeth PIs. Um, but like I said, the ones that we've had some pretty good luck with were the ones we found on Amazon and also the Lennox ones for some reason have been really good. If you can get Bosch blades for some reason or somehow that fit this thing and I don't even know if they make ones that exist for this, then you know, those would be really good too, I think. Uh, Bosch usually makes some pretty good blades. Anyways, I'll stop jibber jabbering. Hope this video helped you guys. If you have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, have a great day. We'll see you guys next time.